And this is Mary Ang here, uh, Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. I'm not usually susceptible to these censorship deletion people, but however, I have deleted a video in which I recorded a phone call pretty much for my own amusement, but then it just stayed very, very amusing, in which um, the character and persona David Keith Davis son of the Marimol and Mama, discussed the criminal history of Robert West, who is of Portland, Oregon, based now, who is a figure who's known to be a registered sex offender due to some crime committed in California. And I've always been curious what that crime was. I can really never get a straight story out of anyone, including Rob West, who I've asked. I was only aware of his criminal history like about a year ago, and I get a lot of commentary with maybe some confusion regarding how common his name is sounding. The crime, according to David Keith Davis, is holding a knife at a woman's throat saying, next time I f I'll fuck you. And um, David was kind of apologetic for that crime, making a reference to he was a man in mental distress, or the woman had harassed him, therefore... And he also made, David Keith Davis also made statement of, I would have, if some woman was harassing me, I would have held a knife to her throat too. And so I guess it is rather embarrassing. It was seen up to 57 times as of this morning. I hadn't checked it yet. Then to appease him primarily, uh, I deleted like all, whatever, seven recordings of this really protracted phone call. And I think my censorship of that is very dubious. I know I haven't violated any state law because Oregon allows one party, single party recording. So yay, Oregon and free speech in Oregon. And then this, I don't think there's really a friendship to be saved specifically. I just think he's someone I happen to know from city council. Sometimes I call him my best friend, but it's more like I just find him interesting. I really don't like having these long phone calls without a recording because he says so many things I have to look up later that it's just easier to have a recording. And he's pretty much been censored out of City Hall, so in a way, um, he's being like kind of controlled artistically and not given a, the platform that he had found. So um, I, may, I may, if I ever have time, edit out the little clip where he discusses the knife point at the woman's throat, but I think any and all activists who may interact with Robert West in Portland should know that, and if they're totally cool with that, like they are with uh, Gregory McKelvey strangling his ex, Madeline Vincent, then that's really their call if they believe in ref reformation or recovery or people who find out how to control their violent impulses. And um, I think the other thing that upset David Keith Davis about that phone call, well, that was the, my primary gem, you know, my interesting elicited data but the other gem I believe was him mouthing off about Teresa Rayford's involvement with um, pedophile uh, Tony Funches from PSU who maybe like jumped into a photo or something with Teresa and I don't know how involved Teresa Rayford is with that person who admitted to having an affair and a family with a 14 year old and then was also a uh, molesting some other teenager and he seems to have like an unreformed attitude about pedophilia he doesn't seem to care about it from an ideological angle even though he's acknowledged he committed crimes by statute so um david has a to me a rightful disgust and disdain for pedophilia affiliates or apologists and I appreciate that he offers that but it usually comes out as some kind of like attack on uh, Teresa Rayford's character and I rather like her I think she can see reason or admit reason so I don't know I haven't had a chance to talk with her about that but I'm not sure how much his criticisms of her aren't just like some kind of repressed crush or whatever but maybe that's also what's embarrassing him is that he would be chewing her out and calling her the b-word which I tried to just derail that because usually when he goes on that tangent he can become sidetracked if I change the subject so he and I talk a lot on the phone and maybe it's a over because <laughs> he doesn't trust me but he never should trust anyone and I don't know why he would 
say some of the things he says on a telephone line that could be easily tapped or recorded. A lot of the things he says can be somewhat mildly inflammatory at times, and I think he needs to be a little more careful, and I think that's the main lesson I'm trying to teach him. And if somebody has a criminal history, whether it's a police captain or a activist or a filmmaker, I don't see why I should be a part of censoring that information from the public. And I think a lot of activist type people have double standards of, oh, if me and my friends commit crimes, we have to keep it all gagged. Whereas if um, like a police chief or somebody did it, then that's a big scandal. So to me, that was the main point of the recording. I think he's upset more about like something to do with his obsession with Nick Fish or Nick Fish's restraining order on him and Twitter. He want, he's, he's upset about a Twitter controversy and I don't even acknowledge that as the main point of the recording. I think our rapport is interesting, but um, sometimes it, it gets a little overblown and our phone calls take all day and they're overly exhaustive. And I don't always agree with him or support every statement he's ever made. So I think friends can be collaborative without being carbon copy similitudes of each other. So word up. If anybody um, needs to know more, email me at maryang1 at gmail.com and I would be happy to um, submit that footage if you want to publish it elsewhere, maybe, or I don't know. I just really don't believe in censorship, and I don't believe in activists censoring others, and I don't believe in activists having loose lips and not being able to deal with the consequences. If you've got loose lips with me, yeah, so being called a secret agent and saying you're going to jail is a little bit like, ah, ha, ha. oh, really? Yeah, and um, evidently my grandpa's inheritance that my mom stole, and I reminded her that she stole it, is the, like he thinks I can go to jail for that, which I beg to differ, and that's the grandpa who worked for the CIA. So calling me a CIA, calling me a secret agent when I'm like the granddaughter of a long-term CIA employee, and my dad was a short-term CIA employee, it's really highly irrelevant. And I was like, yeah, it's money from that. And so what? It's not income. It was given to me when I was seven years old. And it's not. The fact that it was stolen from me is really of a high level of irrelevance. And most of it I gave to charity because I'm just that kind of person. So um, I try to keep my karma clean. And uh, I'm not perfect either. I should uh, list all my sins one day on a video blog, all my sins of self-defense and otherwise.